people are doing so. Man, it has been forever since I said that. And I've been wanting to, trust me. But hey, we've been shifting houses, and that's why the video is scarcity. Essentially, it, it takes forever, and man, it is a royal pain in the ass to shift houses, let me tell you. But at least we're done now. I must say we are in a better place. But anyways, I actually wanted to start off with the OnePlus 10 Pro that did launch and the India release got postponed to March, unfortunately. So right now we shall be taking a look at the S21 Ultra camera. Now I know it has been almost or maybe exactly a year at this point, but I think the S21 Ultra's cameras are a good testament of just how good and overall polished a flagship camera can be. And I basically just want to take a look at exactly where Samsung can improve because I think that's what it is going to be. You know, you could you could almost say that these are like the very small flaws in what could be considered like a perfectionist type of camera. It is not perfect, not by a long shot, but you know, it tries to be. But anyways, I, I digress. So before we get into like the nitpicking and really picking out exactly where we should see improvement, I think we should also address how good of a camera this is because it genuinely is. Like, I think the S21 Ultra, having come out early 2021, it represents basically some of the absolute best cameras in a flagship that you can get for 2021. And you know, some of the standout features in a matter of speaking would be like the versatility. There's essentially only one other phone that has this level of hardware versatility, as in zoom range, that can do both 3x and 10x optical zoom. That's worthy of a lot of praise, let's be honest. And, you know, we'll, we'll obviously be seeing that in the S22 Ultra, but there are small places where we can improve here as well. The 3x zoom camera, for instance, is, is good. Obviously, it's pretty good, but it kind of pales in comparison to, let's say, the iPhone 13 Pro's 3x zoom camera. Essentially, the amount of detail that you can get in your photographs, I've done my camera comparisons, you can check them out using the link in the description, but basically the detail that you can get from the 3x zoom camera is slightly lower. Like in general, lower compared to the iPhone. And I'm using the iPhone as a baseline because everybody knows about the iPhone's cameras and just how good or bad they are in what situations and so on and so forth. My point is that this is maybe a small place where we might see an iterative upgrade that uh, obviously the camera comparisons that are gonna come out the moment I can get the S22 Ultra, yeah, those will absolutely spill the truth about just how much of an upgrade we're seeing on the S22. That said, what about portraits and human subjects? I think that is one major area where Samsung has improved a lot. Like with the S21 Ultra, I believe it was in the keynote where they kind of talked about how they've improved on selfies and skin tones and so on. And honestly, they have. The overall quality of portraits that you can get from the S22 Ultra, very good. But is it the best? It gets close, but not quite, at least not in my opinion. I took some portrait shots even a few days ago and compared it to the iPhone. Guess what? The iPhone edged it out by just a little bit here and there. I think, you know, it just, maybe the skin tone is a little bit better, or maybe the contrast is handled just at tiny bit better on the iPhone. I mean, it's a small difference, of course, but side by side, definitely visible. And backlit situations in portrait mode, I feel they could be handled slightly better. You know, I'm not saying it's bad. You're getting a very usable image, you know, despite harsh conditions, but I feel like the iPhone sort of takes a lead here as well. And again, I'm comparing with the iPhone because it's a very good baseline and not because uh, I feel like it's the best camera or anything. That is absolutely not the case for me, at least. I think it's great in video. It is probably the best in 4K video, but not in photos. Anyways, going back to the S21 Ultra now, another small place where we can again see iterative improvement is in night mode. I would say it's pretty fabulous on the S21 Ultra. Like it's, it's no doubt one of the best night mode smartphones that you can get for good reason. I mean, this thing costs north of $8,000. If this didn't have good night mode, then boy, that would have been a bummer. But yeah, night mode is great, but again, small areas of improvement, in my opinion, it would be night sky. Essentially, the night sky, when you take a night mode shot, it tends to have these small artifacts in there. Now, 
it doesn't happen too much or too often to really be too much of a complaint but regardless i still think it's definitely a place that the s22 ultra can improve upon essentially having processing that can implement smoother and you know more noise free night skies that could be quite a nice upgrade to be honest like yeah normal night mode works incredibly well and i remember having this weird green tint issue in ultra low light situations i'll probably throw up some references and you know some previous camera comparisons that i've done but uh, it seems to have been resolved for the most part i did some ultra low light testing and right now at least i have not been getting that issue so yes hopefully it has been fixed Moving on though, the ultra wide camera. Now you might be thinking, you know, the S21 Ultra has probably one of the best ultra wide cameras. I'm gonna praise it. And yes, it has a really good ultra wide camera, but the, the competition, competition has, has been, been, getting, been getting, ahead. getting ahead of the S21 Ultra. But see, the thing is that the competition. I'm not talking about the iPhone here, of course. There are phones like, let's say the OnePlus 9 Pro, or maybe the Mi 11 Ultra or even the Vivo X70 Pro Plus, they have extremely high quality ultra wide cameras at this point. And the S21 Ultra is a good quality sensor and a camera here. It has really good macro as well. But in general, if you were to compare something like, you know, overall quality and detail, the photos and even, you know, by extension, the videos would be better on those phones. And, you know, quality sensor it's not a massive ultrawide camera for the S22 Ultra. Having a larger sensor, the difference would be in general a higher quality sensor on the ultrawide camera for the S22 Ultra. It could go a long way in my opinion. Like the difference could quite possibly be night and day, maybe. So those were the photography tiny little flaws that we could see iterative upgrades on. But then for video as well, I would say that 8K video is probably not going to get implemented on the S22 Ultra's ultra wide camera, which is a bummer honestly, because I feel like 8K with the ultra wide is probably the best applications of it, of just having that high resolution with like other advantages of the ultra wide camera, for instance, stabilization and just a wider field of view. But unfortunately, I think Samsung is still going to go for a 12 pixel ultra wide, which means 8K is out of the picture. But I do hope to see that the main camera 8K gets improved because at this point, it's not exactly usable without a tripod. And even then, you get this like almost insane crop. The downsides are a bit too much, especially especially because there are phones like the OnePlus 9 Pro or the Mi 11 Ultra, like those two phones, they can do 8K video with proper stabilization and almost no crop. So yeah, I'm really hoping that at least the main camera 8K gets improved. And next up, 4K 120. You know, there's only one other phone that can do 4K 120 at this point, is the OnePlus 9 Pro, at least, you know, among the phones that I've used. And man, the fact that it's possible with the Snapdragon 888, it goes to show that it's obviously supposed to be at least possible with, you know, any next generation chipset. It should be quite easy. And I'm not sure why we haven't even seen the implementation yet in 2021 flagships, but I'm, I'm really hoping that it gets pushed forward because it is such an incredible feature. Okay, 120 on smartphones, I think that's gonna be like the next big thing for slow motion just in general because the quality of 4k video it's stellar and the slow motion from 120 although not like extreme slow motion it can still get the job done for majority of slow-mo footage that you'd want so 4k 120 and 8k video now these are like you could almost say like extreme features that i'm really hoping to see either added or improved on the s22 ultra but you know what i am sure about one thing that is going to happen on the s22 ultra we will definitely get slightly better or um, slightly consistent 4K30 video because 4K30 on the S21 is pretty damn good. But let's face it, at this point, I'd say the iPhone 13 Pro, it kind of blows everything out the water, the S21 Ultra included. So what I'm really looking forward to is that the S22 Ultra can do really good 4K video with the extra stuff like good 8K and really nice looking 4K120. Now those, tied together 
you know, they can really make a compelling device. Even though it's not best with 4K, it can definitely be a very good videography device regardless. So yeah, if at this point, you know, you didn't guess it already, I'm really looking forward to the S22 Ultra and I think despite being an iterative upgrade, it could be quite a significant one and one that Samsung needed. And so with that said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, do hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because the S22 Ultra coverage is gonna be spicy to say the least. Well, I'll be seeing you guys then. Cheers.